What's going on? Hopefully that spotting video, you know, the last episode helped you out and it made sense. In this video, we're gonna dive a little deeper into trimming that entire timeline that we've made and, you know, creating it so that we can send it over to the client to get feedback on it. Yeah, I'm gonna talk you through all the things that we need to do in order to send it out. And the most important thing we're gonna talk about is how to use the trim tools within DaVinci Resolve. And I'm sure in Premiere and in Final Cut, there are similar tools to probably do the same thing, but I'm using DaVinci Resolve for this, so yeah. And, you know, in order to follow along, download the keyboard shortcuts that are linked in the description below. And good luck. For the sake of this episode, I made a short timeline. Yeah, So let's say this is the timeline that we want to use. Yeah, So it contains all the clips that we need for our video and we're almost ready to, uh, to present it to our client, but we need to do some final touches. Yeah, So we are going to trim some clips down. Yeah, And there is such a convenient way of doing this in Resolve. So if you haven't downloaded my keyboard shortcuts yet, do it, it's in the description below. And if you want to install it, go to Resolve, DaVinci Resolve, Keyboard Customization, the three dots in the top right corner, and then Import Preset, that's it. Then you are on the same page as I am and you can follow along pretty easily. So there's a few ways to trim yeah? and there's a few like more time consuming ways that probably most of you guys will use. So the one that is most common is um, probably the cut tool. So let's say we are scrubbing through our timeline and just in between my timeline follows the playhead. So to do that, go to timeline and click this button, selection follows playhead or command F. That's what I assigned it to. So now it stays on this clip, which is sometimes useful, but mostly I like to follow it. Yeah, uh, and I'll come back to that later. Right now, we're gonna start by trimming. So let's say we want to get this part away. Now, what you can do is you, you select the clip and you press C on the keyboard that cuts it, then press backspace to delete it, then press the A button to select everything, but now it's the music selected, we don't want that. So press this button to, you know, make this uh, sort of not moving along with anything you do. So A and then select it over. That's one way. You'll see how many steps that are, and that is just time consuming. If you drag that over an entire timeline, like a, a 40 minute worth of timeline, it's so much work. So there's a more convenient way. One thing that I like is to press W and E. So if you select a clip and you want this part to be gone, press W and it's gone. Same goes for E. Go to the end and press E. Now everything from the right to the left is gone and you know, otherwise from the left to the right if you press W. Now there is even a better way. Inside Resolve, we have a trim tool. By pressing T on the keyboard, we're accessing the trim tool, which is this button here. With this trim tool, we can scrub through the footage really easily and we see on our screen that the left um, side of the screen is basically what is the start of the clip so which is over here and then the right side is the end of the clip yeah so which is over here and we can see in let me get this out of the way and we can see in real time how the clip is moving so how much of the end is still over how sick <laughs> all right but now it's getting even more interesting when we do the same um, keyboard shortcuts, W and E, while having the trim tool selected, it will ripple delete it. Every step that we had to do previously with the cut, click, delete, A, drag, is now all done in one motion. So we'll just, you know, search until here, press W, uh, E, and it's gone. And you're, you know, you can continue. That's so fast. So let's say I want it right when he touches that thing, W, wham, and right here, E, cool. And then this part, right when the second guy jumps off, W, and then right when he hits the ground, E, bam. And then here and here, and then here and here. You see how incredibly quick that is? And of course we have like six clips lined up in this timeline, but can you imagine if you have like 200 clips in your timeline. You have to do that cut, click, delete, uh, reorder every single clip. That just drives me crazy. So this is how I prefer to do it. 
and this is a very fast way to do it. So that's that. Now, another quick thing is up top here, you see edit it. That means that everything that we've done so far was being done before or at, like before the auto save kicked in. So if I press command S to save it, the edit button is gone and you know that whatever you're doing in the screen is saved. If I do make another change now, it says edit it again. So I press command S to save it. So for example, if you've done something big, you want to save it if it says edit it because otherwise if it crashes, you're, you know, you're lost it. So to set up autosave, you go to DaVinci and then uh, preferences and then to user, project save and load. And you can just, you know, dial in your settings. Five minutes is mine because I just don't like to lose everything. So that's it for this short tutorial. It's just such a simple thing, but it's so essential in order to make your editing workflow faster. Yeah, this whole trimming, trimming thing. I mean, that's why if it's so useful to do it in, in cooperation with the spotting technique that we talked about earlier in my previous video, because you can just make a rough cut, put it in, put it in a timeline, make your rough edit, and then just trim from clip to clip, bam, 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 bam. And you, I mean, if you're spot on and you're, you're, you're concentrated, you're not sort of scrolling through Instagram or something, you're, you can be done within an hour if you're doing a big project, you know, with trimming. And now what you want to do is you, you know, what, like put a grade on your footage, you know, make, make a nice simple grade. Doesn't have to be the end grade, but like a, a rec 709 conversion. So it doesn't look like log and then do some sound designing that the, you know, the levels are right. Doesn't have to contain like sound effects or something, just basic stuff export it in like, let's say full HD in 5,000 KBPS or five MBPS and send it over to a client. Yeah, export it in your uh, drive file, uh, share the file to your client and he can, you know, give you feedback. You change it up again, you do this whole thing over again and until everybody's happy and then you can continue. But we'll talk about that in the next video. All right, cool. So the next episode is going to be sort of how to create different uh, deliverables and how to do that as efficient as possible, what the workflow is around um, creating different deliverables. So stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.